like to call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Times and the timekeeper. That hasn't been on our agenda in the past. I love it though. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. That's fine. Um, well, if you have read the odds and ends, I'm trying to become a little more efficient about yes. board meetings and okay. things. So, so do people have You can take my lead or you can All right. say no. <laughs> so let's go to the reports to the board. Um, for this first time, I don't want anyone to feel cut off. So, Ray, could you share how long you think you need for your report? Eight minutes. Okay, that's Not precise. Eight. It's it's hour, right? Seven. Not and that includes the website. There's a 7.1.1. Um, and then business manager report. She will not be, be here. That, I will be recording for Okay, her. how long? Uh, Nine minutes. Okay. <laughs> I guess. All right. So we have an ascending time. Okay. Yeah. Superintendent's update. Uh, I'll just put both of those together. Let's call it. Uh, let's call it nine. No, for both? both. Yeah, for both. Are you sure right. you don't want like fifteen? Okay. Or... You want more? Than you want more? No. Well, no, 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 talk forever and not say much. Um, right. principal's okay. report. We've shared it. Right. So if you've, I've read it. Okay. But there's there's little reporting. They do the yeah. reporting. Yeah. Ten minutes. Okay. Questions. Ten yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. Just for time. Okay. Okay. Uh, board yes, comment. We need minutes for that. How many do you think we need? Um, I think we need should have at least ten. Okay. Okay, under a discussion. Okay. Yeah. I assume that public comment would be open. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Homeschool outreach and access, 10 minutes enough for that, we think? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Future agenda items. All right. There we go. Thank you all for doing that. Just me see the agenda was three minutes. <laughs> okay. I'm not the timekeeper. <laughs> Who would like to be the timekeeper? I have a really nice time. Does anyone else want to volunteer to be the timekeeper? I'll do it. Okay. All right. which brings us to public comment. Yeah, yeah I got a question. Uh, what about the heating system that we don't think might not last a week the winter? Any updates on that? Okay. Um, I believe our updates are that we we have done the report, or we've got the report on what we need, and um, <clears throat> we're waiting um, until we have the details from the audit to know financially where we're at, and because it's a, it's a pricey item. Um, probably Owen and Andra know, you know, more about exactly where we're at than and and can update as needed. Yes, Rodney. Well, I, I would like, as, as soon as we know when the audit is done, right. we know we have the money, that we lock somebody in for it for next summer. Yeah. I think that's the best way well, to do it. What are we this winter? Well, I don't know. Well, what do you want to do? You want to do the furnace now? We've got to do something, sir. I'm telling you, we'll be very lucky if we make it through this winter. Okay. For one thing, the compressor field, the dryer for the compressor field, and it filled every single pneumatic lineup that services the thermostats with water, destroying all the thermostats. So I don't know what you're going to do because we probably won't 
I have put my feet in here. I guess I have a point of order, uh, okay. and I guess I'd like to ask the principals: Is this was this discussed with you at any no. point before this meeting? I know it wasn't discussed with me, and we do have some order about how these things go. And I guess um, I felt kind of blindsided the last time something like this came up at the board, and it hadn't been really discussed before this. And I guess I, I guess uh, I'm, it's perfect right of people to ask, but I think we do have to establish some process in how this is going to be done. And uh, um, so that's just my my point uh, on this. We have that. I believe in July when I was approached about it, I there was an email conversation which we can go back to, which we got to Lisa, and Lisa, you replied with what you just said about we're waiting for the audit. So that, I don't think anything's changed since then. The last time. And why do we spend $50,000 for a survey and then go out for a bid, which we get a bid, and the people were telling us, okay, we need to start July 8th. Right, and as of July 8th, we weren't, we, we did not want to overspend our budget, is the bottom line. Owen. To respond to Bruce. I very briefly heard this afternoon that that John Hubble is the other person, and Wendell Wills said they were coming. Meaning, they have not approached me about this. I did not know about these. Is that a problem? We have asked you a number of times. What have you asked me, and when? About what is going to happen about the heating system? I, I would recommend that this is done professionally mm -hmm. and not in a public meeting. We have not spoke about this. And there's a couple things here, Wendell. First of all, you're working right now, right? I took, I, well, I've taken off my, half, my, my lunch break. So you moved your lunch break? Yes. The communication breakdown here is really embarrassing. I'm the supervisor with Andrew of this building. I'm hearing about this sideways from you two. And there's three things you want to talk about. Right. Sideways. You never came to me or Andra. We you know the answer on the, on the boiler. We don't have the money. We're not sure of the money, and we need to take care of the money. We've been having problems with the thermostats all last year. This is the first I've heard that they were filled with water, and I'm hearing it at a meeting. Sorry. I think just as a point of order, because things are muddy, because we have a situation where this is personnel raising this concern out of chain of command at a meeting that if we were to move further it, that we need to to address the chain of command and table this I feel badly because you are public um, and we can add this to a different section of the meeting section do you want to say anything on your way out under your breath or no no you want to say a lot no we have Talk to you. Okay. Thank about you. These and we'll talk tomorrow. Yeah. Excuse me. All right. Sorry about that. Is there is there any other public comment? That brings us to the consent agenda. There are minutes in the packet. I will the minutes from those four meetings. I would move that we um, approve them all as a as a block. Okay. If no one has any edits. Um, I just have a couple. The minutes from our retreat on August 9th mm -hmm. um, were not complete. There are some incomplete sentences that I'd love to just <coughs> flesh out and then I can, and I got some extra clarification from around the pre-K program. So I could either amend that and save it for the next meeting, I guess, for everybody to review and approve. Would that be the thing to do? Or how would you like, I mean, the, 
pretty simple, but I just don't want the minutes to stand as they are with yeah. sentences that aren't finished. Okay. So for August 9th, we'll amend for the next meeting and okay. table those for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And shall we look at the remaining three as, as a block? A block. <clears throat> Any questions about the others? I know I usually read them when they first come in, so some of them feel like they came in a while ago. I make a motion that we approve the other three okay. uh, minutes as printed here. All right, a second. All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, reports to the board. Director of Technology. Board oh, board comment. I'm so sorry. Yes, I think we do have board comment. I, I have a couple uh, board comments. Um, I sent an email to Lisa a couple days ago, and because the agenda had already gone out, we just decided we'll throw it in board comment. But uh, so two things. I'll do the well. There, the first one is um, I was recently approached by somebody within our community wanting more clarity as to why we have four administrators and why they're paid the salaries that they're paid. And I know that we've had comments about this at past informational meetings as we were reviewing the budget and as well as letters to the editor, things have gone in the paper. And I know there's been certain responses, but I just thought instead of just kind of pushing this aside, if we were to come out with something that was clear and comprehensive as to what it takes to be an administrator, what kind of expertise is required, what is the pay scale that we see within our state, uh, you know, just something that is well explained because there's obviously reasons behind this, but to put it in three minutes at a public comment or, you know, it's too much. But if we had a document, I thought it might be a nice mm -hmm. proactive way of keeping our community informed and doing it in a way that wasn't confrontational. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd bring that to a board meeting and to see what everybody thought. Yes, Tammy. You use the word administrator in your context, um, and I'm not sure if you meant administrator or director, and I need that clarification. Principals. Great. We have four administrator principals. Principals. Right. Uh, Great. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure I didn't confuse the roles. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think in, in my mind I'm clear about why we have four people and why we offer the salaries that we offer, um, but I do agree that being transparent about that and proactive would support, I think, things moving forward in a more positive way. Because I was blindsided last year somewhat when we had that person um, who came to a meeting and was asking if people would take a reduction in salary and those sorts of of questions, um, which I think we know that if we want to ha attract the best people for our schools, we need to offer a competitive salary. So sharing what administrator salaries look like in Vermont um, might be worthwhile as well. And what they, what kind of training they need in right. order to, and what kind of responsibilities they have as an, at, at their position, mm -hmm. and how that compare, you know. I just think all that information, that transparency, will help everybody mm -hmm. kind of understand mm -hmm. how the school is run. It's a lot of work. <laughs> but of course, so then it's a question of if this is something that people agree on or the board agrees on, uh, I guess we bring that to Bruce to, uh, I mean, so I don't know, is this something we need to vote on or is there or any discussion? We need to draft. Well, I mean, the way it's a support document. When we were trying to figure out the vision for leadership in this new configuration, uh, this was a recommendation. I'm thinking I was probably the one that recommended it to you. And it, you, I think, if I recall, there was quite a bit of discussion about it. And uh, uh, we, it was something, you know, there always were four administrators. There was just a vice principal and principal at Royalton, not a two principals, 
and then there were two administrators here, um, kind of felt, uh, especially at the Royalton campus, it was important that uh, now that it was going to be a high school and elementary school, that there were people um, that had the appropriate training to be able to deal with those grades, and that it wasn't going to be one size fits all. So there were always um, four administrators. They may not have been all principals, but uh, that was another change that we decided to make, and it was certainly something that the board batted around when we were going through the, the new articles of agreement and, and how it was going to play out. Um, so, I mean, that's historically how I remember that we got to where we are. Um, so. um, today, I, I actually had this conversation with a resident today, and, uh, and what I told him was, basically, people come to the board meetings, they want more. They want, whether it's world language or skiing or sports or, you know, everybody, or AP math, everybody wants more. If you're going to add more programming, it's going to take more administration to run it. That's all there is to it. And the way these are comparable to the state. So if you want to cut programming, I guess we can cut staff too. But they don't want to do that, so. I think there's also still a question that I get, which is, well, do we still have vice principals too? And no one seems to understand that either. That the, the leadership structure changed so much. So I think a, a statement yeah. um, written, I think the board could write it, that mm -hmm. this is this was a decision that we made, and we made it together, and we made it with a lot of thought, and we support um, our our principal team, our administrators, and, and the jobs that they're doing. Um, does it make sense for us to work on a draft like a slideshow and then share it in October with the, the principals and then put it on the agenda to present it in November around budget time? Um, I would recommend maybe um, the board would want to work with Bruce on this. Yep. And, and there are some things that guide us in this, like Vermont School Quality Standards yep. and um, the ISLIC standards for any school administrators that really shows the responsibility. So there's right. kind of work already. Okay. Thank you. Sounds like a great example. Okay, so the next one then? Okay. All right, one more item um, that I approached this about is that um, from September 20th through the 27th or the 28th is uh, climate awareness. And on the 20th in specific, which is next Friday, is a climate strike that's happening worldwide. But also, there's a lot of action happening at a lot of different schools. And so I was just curious if, if Hi, our, okay. I was curious if there are any plans for bringing awareness to our schools about the climate strike and what that means or what's happening, or even if there's going to be, you know, some sort of an educational component on campus, or, you know, if, if there's any plans. And if I, I would just encourage some sort of uh, awareness around that day, whether it's on campus or in town or whatever. But there's some amazing things happening around the state. and. There are a number of schools that are getting involved with demonstration strikes, or and so I was just hoping that our school is going to do something. Um, and for what it's worth, if, to find more information, um, I'll just add a little more. Um, Greta Thunberg, who is kind of like the leader of, of these climate strikes, she started back in August of 2018. Uh, with her own activism in her own country, but this has become worldwide. She's getting a lot of recognition, but she has traveled to the United States on a boat, and she's going to be traveling throughout the United States with uh, a zero impact plan to raise awareness to our climate emergency. And so on the 20th of September, she'll be in Washington, D.C., and like I said, uh, if, if people want to know more about what's happening, there are a couple different websites that have a lot of information and let you know what's happening um, throughout the state. 
and that would be vermontclimatestrike.org as well as 350.org. Both have lots of information and guidance documents to help people figure out if they do want to take action, what, how, how that could look, you know, various different formats for schools or individuals or the public. 350.org, 350.org, and vermontclimatestrike.org is another website. They don't seem to be cross-pollinating a whole lot, but I know that they're, they're sharing a lot of similar information. And there's some great articles on both those websites as well, giving you a little background story to it. Is there a question you want to answer? I wanted to let, well, the first question was, are you aware of it? Um, yes. The second question <laughs> is, uh, is, uh, is either campus doing anything? And if, uh, if not, I would encourage, you know, I, I hope that there's something that our schools do. Yes. Go on. There's some families taking advantage of what's being offered in the state. And I'm not sure about out of state. So we, they've informed us. The global citizenship class is talking about it. And they're taking the lead from the students on what they want to do. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> Same for the planet. Good. Well, I just wanted that to be, I just wanted to say it out loud. because I think I'm, Reed probably has something to say. Uh -huh. yes. I was going to. Yeah, and I've had several conversations over the last six weeks about this with folks. Um, and uh, this, unlike the youth climate rally, which happens in April, is uh, the students who are organizing this want it to all be students. So uh, in honoring the leadership that's out there about Friday's event, uh, for me to be involved would be to preempt the students um, what they want, at least the leaders of, of that organization. So I've kind of been sitting back to take the lead of any of my students who want to engage with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the event starts at 10 in Montpelier, uh, which would be pretty much from here means that students would miss a whole day of school. Uh, and I don't think as the administrator, uh, it would be my position to encourage students to take the whole day off of school and, uh, certainly not to provide a bus or anything for that like we might do for the youth climate rally which is coordinated with educators who kind of coordinate the day of education and that sort of thing right well I know like the Sharon Academy is doing something I think right on campus so students don't have to travel anywhere they could just they could raise awareness even in their gymnasium yes, or again. walk outside <laughs> and spend five minutes outside and then walk back into class you know there's so many formats in which to do it but. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm worried about safety, just of the kids, whatever they're going to do, you know, uh, and, and I mean, I, I'm sure they're of the age of expressing themselves, and that's quite appropriate. I'm talking about the high school kids okay. especially, and I guess I just want to, are you going to do anything locally? I don't you know of, or, is it, or are they going to do anything locally? I, I'm not aware of any, nobody within the community has, has expressed any in, any plans for the day. Uh, so uh, I haven't been trying to encourage students walking out of their classes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Any other additional board comment? I know we're over time. Um, Director of Technology. Okay. So um, I was uh, made aware of an email with a concern from a parent community member Thank you. around the end of last month about um, some aspects of the Bethlehem Royalty website that were lacking. And so I met with the four principals on uh, September 3rd, where we came up with a plan for a specific person to do some work to review the website and then start making edits. Mm -hmm. And then uh, last Thursday or so, I met with Principal Wells, and he is uh, now spearheading. Oh, fabulous. I, yeah, I appreciate you handling that so promptly. Of course. 
Does anyone have any specific questions? You have, we need to have a new hire, right? For the job that oh, replaced you? Since last month? Yeah, I mean, they haven't oh. heard that, so. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, Ed Nichols joined us uh, after mm -hmm. Labor Day. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the name? Um, Ed Nichols. Thank you. Um, he works in Royalton uh, every day except for Friday when he's here. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, ad additionally, um, there's, a, there's a policy on disposition of assets which says that the, the board alone may declare property surplus mm -hmm. and then decide how it gets uh, disposed of. And uh, in reviewing this with the business manager and the superintendent, I'm gonna, we are going to make a uh, revision to the policy committee. But before that happens, I'm seeking your permission to, at, at my discretion, make those decisions up to a certain value uh, until that policy can be changed. Mm -hmm. So at, at each campus, there's equipment that's 10 years old that um, no longer serves the school day to day and is essentially up to the value. Okay. And so this, my understanding is this is sort of boilerplate, the $5,000 or less. The $5,000 only applies to federal money. Okay. So in terms of local money, it's if, if I wanted to dispose of a pencil, I would have to get the board's approval. Oh. Okay. So what, why haven't we heard from you then? <laughs> well, we haven't disposed of him. He's very careful with that. He's working all this. He just, he wants some freedom created by you guys, permission by you guys to unburden, you know, the school of a lot of useless equipment, really. Um, and so why don't you tell him what you'd like? So if, if we have equipment that, that is not be in use, not set aside for spares or, or, or other such uh, use, uh, that unless the value of that is over $1,000, that okay. would, I would like to be able to just dispose of that. Again, until the policy is reviewed. So. Is the $1,000, would that be current value or, or was the purchase value at the time? Most of the things I, we would be e-wasting are going to be essentially a zero dollar value but as the policy is written we cannot get rid of it in, without okay. your permission so e-wasting is what um properly disposing of it right okay. in, in our context that means taking it to the dump to the transfer yeah. station okay yeah. yes Owen. i think chris was maybe asking you asked the value we paid for it Oh. Or the value of it now. And right. Yeah, I mean, is, which one is it that we're... The current value. The current value. The current value. Yeah. The current value. Yeah. So after it's depreciated for 10 years. Well, that should cost the most. spots that this equipment took up, they've already been replaced. Okay. It's not as if we're disposing of equipment that needs to then be replaced. Did you hear that, Andrew? Yeah, I heard that. Just if we're like writing a policy, I would think that would be how I would replace it. Okay. okay. Right. And is this a policy we'll be looking at in the October 3rd round of meetings? Correct. Okay. Which I'll touch on. Okay, so, in your superintendent's yeah, report. Yeah. Okay. Minutes. So is there a motion <coughs> nice or more questions? Of course. Yeah. So do we I mean and this is I'm just thinking and asking, I'm not saying this has to be this way, but do we need to consider any type of need of of you know, you you know, say you determine that it needs to be wasted, but do we need to have anybody else, you know, sign off and just say Say, yep, yeah, that's that's good by me too, just to make sure we're not making any unilateral decisions and that you know that you know that I don't know, that that you're just you know that you're not just you know making decisions and then and then we're then somewhere along the way somebody says, Well what happened to this stuff? And you know, I'm just thinking about 
I don't know, liability, mm -hmm. not, not really liability, but just for, I mean, even for like your own, I don't know, for lack of a better word, your own protection, just to say mm -hmm. that, you know, that this was corroborated by somebody else if somebody then later on came on and accused you of, of improperly deciding to dispose of things or something like that, that, you know, just in terms of a check and balance that we have, you know, just a second set of eyes, doesn't have to be the board, but, you know, if it's the, the administrator on the campus, you know, one of the principals so that you know, falls under if it's, you know, laptops for the elementary or something, they say, yep, we agree, all of these old laptops are are done, and, you know, and we're moving on to the new ones, just to, again, have a, you know, for, Sounds great. for everyone's protection. We have the nurses wasting more things, Yeah, you know, just, you know, I mean, it's, you never know. Are you making that as a part of a motion? So, who I mean, we're going to rewrite this right. policy. So, well, we're going to set the policy on October 3rd. Yeah, but right. so what right. Ray's trying to do, especially when this this district, he'd like to get going on on making start basically, uh, because it's going to be a couple more weeks before we have that meeting, and then there's a long drawn out process of approval that has to go before the board for wording and and uh, be warned, warned in the paper. Uh, so it's going to be a while before the policy is actually done, done. I asked him to come tonight to, you know, express what he needed so that he could get started with at least you folks uh, mm -hmm. and then do the rest of the districts, you know, as soon as the policy's uh, written. So if you're comfortable with that. So, so does it make sense for him to be in communication with the building administrator, just so that one of the administrators. Okay. Yeah, why, don't, why don't we make a motion to approve the administrators to um, give the administrators authority to approve technology or whatever um, the terminology would be with that? So, would we say give administrators authority with the technology director? Andrew, do you have a thought? What's that? I would just say the, I would just say the administrator and the technology director would tell them what needs to be done. I don't know. Uh, I'm not making a motion, of course, uh, okay. but I can make a recommendation to the administrator to approve okay. it. Okay. All right. Since these are Bethel and Royalton assets, not SU assets. Okay. All right. So we're giving the administrators the authority to approve. Um, the recommendations of the technology director? Right. On items under $1,000 in value. Technology assets. Disposal of. Right. Disposable technology. of technology assets under $1,000 in value. Okay. Anybody making that motion? So, sorry. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we. Uh, give authority to the administrators on the campus uh, to, uh, based on the recommendation of the Director of Technology, to uh, make the decision to uh, dispose of uh, technology items that are of a value of $1,000 or less. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. All in favor of authorizing the administration to <clears throat> do all of that? Um, with to dispose of assets under a thousand dollars when recommended by the technology director. Please say aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposed? No. Thank you. Um, did you say more to your report? Just, just one last thing. So, okay. um, uh, around the SU, we're doing a lot of uh, E911 testing that was done in Bethel today, mm -hmm. and um. We realized that there's a, a piece of that that is missing, and we're working to rectify that. We believe without cost. Okay. Um, All right. Both. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was two minutes over too. 
Okay, thank you for that. Just so you know, if right. we keep this trend, we're going to be 20 minutes longer. Well, so maybe we need to amend it for next time to say 10 minutes for the technology yeah. report. Well, I'm sure he's not eager to come before you every meeting. Right. Yeah, he'd be happy to be here. Okay. Whatever necessary. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, when we're on the agenda, we know 10 minutes. And hopefully we will not have as clunky a motion in the future. All right. Um, so next we have um, the business manager slash superintendent's report. Um, so I will tell you, um, and I hope, I'm not sure whether this is current, but uh, the policy committee will be meeting on October 3rd, um, and I think Lisa, you were the mm -hmm. person involved. Are you willing to continue yeah. that? Yeah, yep. Um, I'm, we're gonna try to, um, there's been a lot of things that the nurses have submitted a policy mm -hmm. on lice, and we have uh, several other policies uh, that we didn't touch last time that probably should consider now. Uh, we also have two uh, that were circulated, and there was one board that didn't like them and have kind of set them back, sent them back to the committee to be revised. And instead of having a, a whole new policy for one board, we have to try to resolve them, the wording in them to try to please so that we only, we have one policy that, that stands. Mm -hmm. So that'll be on October 3rd at six o'clock at the office. Uh, and I've pretty much assembled everybody from each of the, one person from each of the boards to Represent that means that you, that doesn't mean you can't show up if you don't want to. If you, yeah, I mean, if you want to be a part of it, go ahead. Uh, you can come and and uh, share in the discussions. Uh, it's not a big private agenda. I expect we'll m maybe have a second meeting in December sometime. Um, so uh, to go into uh, probably Tara, uh, the business. Uh, manager and myself uh, together the report is that I was given a pretty direct goal in my goals given to me by the executive board that they wanted their audits finished in each of the districts by the 31st of October and uh, we were at that time slated to do the audits um, by the auditing company in late October so we needed to get involved with them and tell them that we weren't happy with that time. The executive board wouldn't like that time and that we needed it changed. And uh, they've been very responsive. They showed up yesterday and began only one person, but it's a start. And uh, he was back again today. Um, I think they will be adding people as we go. And I think they'll be here this week and next week to try to do the preliminary work and then probably take a lot of it back to their office to work on. But we expect, I've been promised by Ron Smith, who is the uh, <coughs> owner of the company, that we would have our uh, documents back by the end of October, like I was instructed to get done. Um, so, you know, that's why Tara's not here. She is working with them probably till late tonight. She was here late last night. and. We're trying to get this uh, finished so that you have the product that you were asking for. Um, there's a couple date switches that I want uh, you to make note of. Uh, there was a meeting, um, executive board meeting, uh, scheduled for the 23rd of December. And because that starts uh, the holiday, uh, I'm going to ask that we move it up one week to the 16th, which is uh, Monday before that, uh, knowing that I'm probably not going to get, we're not probably going to get too much attendance mm -hmm. at that point uh, in the year. Um, so that will be a change I'm going to uh, ask the executive board to make. Um, so the next uh, full <coughs> board meeting will be here on Monday, uh, this Monday coming up. Uh, at six o'clock, and I'm hoping as many of you as can show up uh, so that we do get a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, there will be reports from each of uh, the folks in the central office, and uh, I will be reporting out probably uh, several of the things that we're doing uh, right now. 
the Raising Readers agenda, um, as you've probably seen the banners on each one of the schools, uh, they will be rotated, so we're going to move them probably on October uh, October 8th when we have an administrative meeting. Um, and they will be, uh, there are eight different banners around the issue, and they will be moved, uh, you know, probably every five or six weeks uh, as we go uh, in order to raise awareness for literacy throughout the SU. I'm hearing really good reports. Uh, it's really early, but uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, Amy Toth is very tired at the end of the week as she's been out to each of the schools working with the teachers. Uh, on their uh, literacy work and uh, our latest meeting with the administrators we talked a lot about uh, uh, some of the uh, special uh, interventions that go on and the, the need to make sure that those interventions are at least a half an hour long uh, because to do anything less than that is really ineffective so uh, we've kind of set uh, with the administrators that uh, their interventions that are taking place in that both, in both literacy and math need to make sure that they're at least a half an hour to be effective and so that's that's only a couple days old since we talked about that as with the administrative staff um, i hope you took a look at the iowa lighthouse study that i put in odds and ends i it's my attempt to try to get us out of a lot of the weeds that I know you sometimes get in and mm -hmm. try to work talk about academic things, uh, which good boards do. And uh, mm -hmm. that the lighthouse study is a little bit dated now, but it's uh, you know a lot of a lot of boards around the country have used it. I think I sent you the link to what Connecticut has done. Uh, and it's certainly it's something that kind of raises some awareness about the work uh, that the board should be doing uh, in order to be effective. Um, I also, uh, in the last odds and ends that came out Sunday, I sent around some links for new board members in training, and I also sent some links, links for uh, the VSBA uh, site so that you could mm -hmm. get some some webinars that are there around refreshers <coughs> if you've been a board member uh, and so I'm kind of on this campaign to to try to get board members who maybe live very busy lives and can't get to training that they can do it at home you know through webinars uh, that are very good actually that the VSBA sponsors um, I guess I'd invite any comment or feedback on the odds and ends that you might have, things I can do better, uh, things you'd like to see in there. I'm trying to get away from just telling you about dates coming up and do some other things that, that talk about um, articles or various other things that uh, I want you to see. Um, and there's one uh, that was authored by Sue Sankowitz, and I will send that around. She is uh, the former principal at Brockton High School. And Brockton High School in Massachusetts has a, a real turnaround um, legacy uh, that she's credited with, uh, how they worked on reading and literacy, and it really turned the whole school around. And if you know anything about Brockton, it's a pretty tough place, uh, very poor and uh, They've never been really known for academics, and now they are. And uh, I, I have that article, and I'll make sure it's available to you. I think it's an interesting read. Uh, she uh, also published a thing called the Brockton <coughs> Book, which is talks a little bit about um, how they how they turned around uh, the, <coughs> difficult, the difficult conditions. So um, I'll get I'll make that available to you. Any comments? Any feedback? I appreciate the odds and ends, and, and feel like they, they're really informational. Thank you. Yeah, I like those. Glad you're doing it. Can, can you remind me again where the next school board meeting is going to be? Did you say here? here? Right here, okay. yeah. And uh, the, most of the boards, I think, at those meetings believed it was best if we could have them at either Royalton or here mm -hmm. because it's central. Uh, that a couple of years ago, a year or two ago, they wanted to move all over the, the SU, 
at different locations to see, you know, get in other buildings. But some of the folks that were at either end were starting to complain about the distance and, and we were seeing not a whole lot of attendance. So uh, until I'm told otherwise, that's the new agenda, which is to either be here or be in Royalton so we can stay. Uh, you know, central to our SU uh, for those meetings, and I guess maybe in particularly in the winter, it's probably a, a good strategy. Uh, so, so that's that. Um, I also have uh, been given the resignation of uh, Wendell Wills, who uh, submitted this most recently. It says, please accept this formal notice of my resignation from the position of custodian at White River Valley Schools, effective November 15th, 2019. For care consideration, I've made the decision to resign in order to retire. Well, Wendell's been here a long time, and he, mm -hmm. you know, he's he's really, I don't know how many years, Owen or Andrew, do you, do you know? Well, this is the second time being here, but I don't know how many years. When I first was hired here, he was the town constable. So I'll send that around to you. <laughs> Right, but years before that, he had been here. So I, he's, he's been here twice since I've been here. Yeah, um, so quite some time. He used to catch me with leaving my window open by mistake at night with the constable. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I, I guess I would suggest you might want to accept this with where you're at. Yes. It's up to you, of course. Going to, yeah. He definitely has good relationships with many of our students. I would entertain a motion to accept Wendell's letter of resignation with regret. The second. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yes. so I'll make the motion to accept uh, Wendell's resignation with regret. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? An extension. Thank you. I'm done. I'm finished. How do I do? How long is that? Two extra minutes. I did. I think everybody just needs ten minutes. But when we had ten minutes, we were two minutes over too. Yeah. So whatever our minutes are. Yeah. It means it's Or we all just need to practice being more succinct. I mean, it's just crazy. Okay. So this brings us to the principal's report. Uh, Do you want to add two minutes for that? I think that's <laughs> a great idea. Yeah. Although we're going to ask We questions. still might um, go two minutes over there if that's just the... Um, so I was wondering um, actually about the update on the fire suppression system um, and the, some of the work that we need to have happen, um, which was in the principal's report. So if you wanted to share um, what you have, or would that would be Sure, great. be glad. Okay. So the next step is to meet with the fire marshal, to take a look at the kitchen and see um, what types of things are prepared there. Um, you know, if you're cooking french fries and grilling steaks all day, then you definitely need yep. a fire suppression, uh, suppression system because of the grease. Mm -hmm. um, but if your cooking is doesn't involve a lot of that, then it's not required. Okay. So they'll come and take a look at the situation and advise us. We'll wonder about that. They'll do the right make your own sandwich project. <laughs> and um, and as far as efficiency, Vermont, um, they're not in the business of offering rebates on the hoods, mm -hmm. um, but they do um, have small rebates like. Five hundred dollars or so for the electronic controls because modern hoods is just not on and off. They adjust to the need and temperature and all of that kind of thing. Um, thank you. Any other questions or anything else you want to highlight? Um, just another since uh, Lily's not here, but this is around the kitchen. One of the other pieces of homework that was going to be done was to consider whether a small sprint van to function as food delivery was going to be actually a good idea or Maybe. if it could be have multiple uses. I think Lily was working on that. Okay, so 
I guess from the minute it looked like he was going to try to have something this month, but um, he still. I can follow up with Colin. You want to listen to follow up with him? Yeah, I, I can follow up. Was that, was that an SU item? No, because it was just I think the conversation went to it could be an SU asset. Mm -hmm. Right, and then if it was, how could it be used? If it was handling food, what other things could it be used for? Um, and all that. Mobile smoker. Yeah. Um, would it be possible to get an update on what our attendance is, or you know, enrollment is looking like compared to last year? Um, just with people getting their tax bills, we're getting questions about taxes and being able to yeah, say it's October. What's the deadline in October? October 1st. October 1st is when the official, we take the official. I thought um, that you do it for like the average of October or something, so we wouldn't be getting it until November. I think he wants to know we can just, still, we just your sense of it right now. Yeah. That should be good. Okay. Are you mm -hmm. to ask a clarifying question about the, to go back to the hood? Uh, are, are we planning on pursuing doing variable speed controls on the hood or what's the plan with the hood or or my understanding is that we're in research mode and okay. we would plan this into next year's budget yeah because yeah. yeah, i think you know to for those hoods yeah i think the the rebate would be good but then the the savings the operation savings on top of that would be uh you know where we would also mm -hmm. see the benefit so uh, you know even if even if we think that you know the 500 is, is small, it would be, you know, incentive to to pay some extra for it because for those hoods, you know, most of the time they come in and turn them on in the morning, and then it's just running full speed until they get done at the end of the day, and a lot of times they don't need to be running at that level, and so if you cut the speed of the fan down to half of what it normally is, you're cutting the energy usage down to one eighth of what it normally is, so it's it's a Cubic, cubic function. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, so there's lots of energy savings to be had versus you know just running at full speed all the time. So, just a, a consideration that we're going forward with that. So, mm -hmm. and efficiency Vermont might be able to help crunch some numbers on that, or right. I might know some people, some students. That can it's not great. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm just curious. Um, you know the concerns over the boiler that came to light at the beginning of the meeting um, about potential repairs. Um, so if in our October meeting we could know what needs to be done as it's getting colder, um, it just seems like that's the responsible thing to do. And I, I mean, I do know we were holding off waiting to know what our resources were. So, so it's, sort of just a catch-22 in a way. But, I, yeah, Owen, please. Uh, I'd be willing to work with Chris on getting some sort of assessment of, of how dire things are. Can you yeah. help me with that? Yeah, I can help out as much as I can. Okay. What just want to work with him, do you? Just want. Okay. Could you, could you also get Tara involved? Um, yeah, she'd like to be, I think. Uh, well, I think the thing to do right away is to talk to the folks that manage our system mm -hmm. and talk to the professionals about it. Okay. And yeah. not to be guessing. Oh, right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Andrea, did you want to add? Sorry, something? I wasn't realizing that I didn't add that the Bethel Open House is next Thursday. No. I guess we're switching off okay, the boiler to the other. Sorry. Yeah, I wanted to add <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just saw her eyebrows. And I was I like, went, oh, no, open house. Sorry. I didn't, know, I didn't know that it was open house and not boiler. Open, open house makes me sick. Like boiler. Her time. Okay. <laughs> time, right, Rodney? Okay. No, no. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 38 seconds. We can oh, talk goodness. through email. And yeah. I've got a couple questions. Okay. So, yeah. okay. I think it would be helpful if you gave me questions. Yeah. All right. So you you have a regular maintenance? Yeah. Boiler maintenance people? We do. Local company or? Vermont. Is it right. you know, Alliance? Alliance. Yeah. And Alliances, they're all over the state. They've got lot, lots of offices in different places, so they probably come up here from like White River Junction or Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, they're here regularly. Yeah. yeah. They do they work at, at Vermont Tech and they do VLS and yeah, they're at you know most 
most institutions you drive by and a lot of times you're going to see a, an alliance truck out in their parking lot. So. Anything else? How was the opening of school? I just, I think good, right? That's yeah, great. Mm -hmm. I've heard all positive things so far. So. I think I Lisa asked that. a question that I have a bit of an answer for. Okay. Right now that we're coming back to that topic. She asked about enrollment numbers. We, we've had almost a student a day enroll in the school. Uh, I think we're up to 14 new students since school started, uh, which is kind of crazy to try to figure out why that's happening. Uh, some are students who had left and are returning. Um, some are students, a couple of kids from Thetford have transferred in, mm -hmm. uh, so feeling good about that. Uh, and we've had two move out, mostly due to family situations mm -hmm. in the high school. So I, th I think we're up maybe as many as four or five more students than we had last year. But again, the number changes every day, and there's a lot of movement. We're up 24 in the middle school from what we had last year. Wow. With the current six grades, which came to us from both campuses. Is that, that's just... It's a larger group. Sheer numbers, you're up 24. Mm -hmm. Head count. Head count. And what about the elementary schools? I, I feel like we're about the same, mm -hmm. but it's... <coughs> they're full of little kids. Is it easy not just to... Like guys a port on that or it's something easy like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Email out. Absolutely. They're all about that. They just don't test that well. Nice. All right. Yeah, it would be just as Andrew said, it would be nice, you know, when you guys have that information to send it to us because we're having conversations with sure. our neighbors all the time and to give them some what sounds like good news, it would be great. It's an action item. Okay. That's right, action item. Okay. So that brings us to, um, so that is that's a future action item, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You heard about this for the next board meeting because it's going to get sent to us. Right. Yeah, who we know. Great. Yes. Uh, it's not in the report, but open house is coming up. Okay. It's a week from Thursday right. for Bethel Campus. <coughs> we would love to have all of you there. It's 5 30 till 7. What's the date? Okay. The 26th. 26th. And what time? 5 30 to 7. And, and if you bring a dish, that'd be great. We really need to. Okay. We'll provide hot dogs, hamburgers, and corn. Yeah. yeah. And I think the Royalton campus has one coming up also. So what is the date for that? October 3rd. 26th. And then October 3rd is the one in October Royalton? October 3rd for South Royalton. Yeah. yeah. Same deal, hot dogs, hamburgers, corn, and They're hot probably I think we're having lobster this year. Oh, oh one up again. <laughs> <laughs> Is it local lobster? <laughs> 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 yes. Local Vermont lobster. From the White River. Great The rare yes. delicacy. <laughs> okay. All right. The raisins from so October 3rd, also 5.30 to 7. <laughs> you can help come serve. Is that a yes or a no on that time? I'm sorry. 7. <laughs> 537 also. Yeah, and ge yeah generally we're, we say at 6 o'clock we invite. I've got 5 to 7 on my calendar. We're doing You're just five. getting ready to get the burgers. Seven, we yeah. usually yeah. we invite people into the classrooms around 6. Okay. And then make an announcement at 6.50 that we're closing. Right. To school now. Yes. So the Bethel is from? 5.30 to 7. And Royalton is 5 to 7. 5 to 7, yes. Thank you. And lobster in Royalton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the year I take my kids to Bethel. <laughs> Bottom feeders. Um, hey, they get popcorn, so it's very all excited. Okay. Um, so that brings us to discussion items. If we've wrapped up, thank you for your principal's report. I appreciate having it ahead of time and being able to read it and read the books and stuff like that. Oh, can I ask one little question on facilities? Okay. Dry well rehabilitation. Is it really a dry well or? Is it dry wall? So behind the art room, there's yeah. a, 
a dry well. It's 20 feet deep. Yeah. I think about mm -hmm. um, big manhole, kind of great there. Um, and uh, we had an engineer come in, or somebody who knows that sort of drainage thing come in over the summer uh, because we had seasonal flooding there every spring. We had two or three days last year where we had a couple inches of water uh, kind of coming through the walls. Um, and so the uh, excavator came in and dug that out, expanded it, added fresh gravel, got all the erosion that had filled in the, the well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will take care of the problem issue. Mm -hmm. It's about $5,000, so it wasn't a big item. Yeah. It was something we hadn't budgeted for, so. Mm -hmm. Is that out of the from that? Uh, it, you know, we'll need to figure out where it comes from out of our other budget lines. Okay. Can I uh, make a comment regarding driver's ed and uh, mm -hmm. And really, the where kind of where we stand with this, we, as you know, we did offer a summer program for drivers ed. It was kind of late because we had the late budget approval. We really didn't know we were going to be able to run it over the summer, but when the budget was approved and it was in there, we decided to do it. I want you to understand the relationship with our uh, area schools uh, out of district in the SU and, and drivers ed. Even if these kids go, I, I had a discussion with Sharon Academy uh, last year because they were charging their kids uh, to take driver's ed, and of course we we don't. And uh, they were concerned because uh, they felt that uh, we had some responsibility to help them with that because we were in the same district. So I called. Um, the AOE to ask about it and I said look uh, they're claiming uh, in the same SU you know we might have some responsibility and I said that's not true is it and they said no here's the deal if you offer it for free like we we have we will continue to support that as long as you open it to those students from other districts from other schools including Sheridan Academy um, that's if if we restrict it to just our own students in Bethel and Royalton, that's going to be a problem. So um, since that time, and I've made it very clear to the people at the high school now, uh, we are going by birth date, the oldest kids first, mm -hmm. and uh, there were homeschoolers calling and how can I get this and and. Uh, so last week I had a, a meeting with uh, Michael Livingston about this. It was one of the topics we talked about. To make him clear, he was, I think they've had a hard time running it because it's 700, 600, I don't, don't quote me on the amount of money, but a significant amount of mm -hmm. money for parents that's, and they've also not been given a lot of support from the state on this. So um, I said, look, the, what I've been told that we can keep our same status as long as we let other kids in to be able to access our program. And he said, well, are you going to take your kids first? And I said, no, we're not allowed to do that. It has to be by birthday, the oldest kids first, and then from there mm -hmm. it goes on in order for us to keep our same status. And so that's what I basically instructed the folks at at the high school to do is to keep a list. As we run these programs, our kids will be blended in with the rest according to birthdays. And I don't want, I didn't want you to be blindsided by this, uh, you know, because it is a little bit of a change from what you might have understood. Uh, it's just something that, like I said, the AOE told us that we had to do it this way if we wanted to keep, because what Michael was trying to get us to do is provide a program off our program for yeah. Sharon Academy, and, and I have been assured by the AOE that that's not the way it works as long as we keep our program open to kids that don't even attend Royalton or Bethel schools, that we would be fine. And uh, I think we have had some kids from out of district, and uh, so. So how does the funding work for this? Like, we're getting some money back from the state, but we're putting some money in as well, right? I was told by Tim Crow when I looked into this two weeks ago that the amount he thinks we get from the state is $70 per student. 
So, and I haven't had a chance to follow up with Bruce, but in light of that information, it seems it would be wiser for us to forgo state aid and charge tuition for anybody outside of uh, our own students. Uh, and we might actually come out ahead by doing that. Uh, the $70, you know, we added $20,000 in the budget for our summer program alone. So that, you know, we're paying over $1,000 out of our budget to, per yeah. kid in our program. So uh, it's a big, Right. Big underwriting that we'd be doing for other folks, but I haven't. I don't have the hard data. I, you know, Tara has been uh, pretty busy to go find out what the revenues are from the state for that. So, but does it make sense to explore that then and report back in November or December after the audit? Um, I I can accept that this is what it is for right now, um, but it does seem like there might be a more cost effective way to do it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't make sense to me that we're supporting the staff from our district, but our the kids in our district who are ready to take the class may be sidelined because we're letting kids from other districts mm -hmm. yeah. come in. Jump in. I, I can see that, I can absolutely see the homeschooling perspective, especially <clears throat> if they're local, but if, if kids are in a school and they've got access to another right of course I, and if they're from the surrounding communities and they want our driver's ed it would be great if they take the rest of our courses this is this is new for shared academy right and michael was going to put the word out that you know if you come in and want to be part of the program that you wouldn't be discriminated against because right. you are not a white river valley student right. uh, like I said, this conversation with him is a week old, and uh, um, that's what I was told by the state. Yeah. That that had to work that way. Why don't we investigate further before we spread it around? Mm -hmm. Because like we might want to change. Yeah. Well, working. we're on camera right now, so I think that's spread sure. it around. No, sure, but I mean, like, we don't want to officially mm -hmm. say that kids from Sharon mm -hmm. get tuition-free driver's ed if we want to then forego the state aid and charge them tuition. I, well, wasn't, I, I didn't have could. a conversation with Green about this. Right. I didn't know that sure. that's what sure. he had learned. And we just didn't have yeah, I mean, I don't have anything, any hard facts. And we may need to stay the course for this year and then next year do something different when we know something different. My, my question is, so it sounds like this change was pretty recent. I'm wondering if there were students who then thought they got into driver's ed and then when we changed how we were doing things, maybe got bumped. And I would just ask if that happened, that communication be exceptionally clear, regardless of where they're from or whether they're homeschooled. We don't have any of that information. Uh, it's pretty clear with the guidance department because I, I knew that this is what the state was asking us to do. Uh, I just think families need to understand the rationale if their child was previously told that they made it into driver's ed and then they are you know, don't have the right birthday. And what's the capacity? I mean, if 20 we, students per session per, pretty much is what I've been told. And are we, are we able to meet that or? We currently have 20 students enrolled and we have 14 who signed up for the spring already okay. or we're on our list. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there probably are more than 20 who, who qualify to take it in the spring because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to sign up until you have your permit. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of kids will be getting their permits probably in the coming months. And so it sounds like you're easily going to fill it to 20 students. And if if we opened it up to students from outside the district, it's possible that they could be filling spots that are already technically filled by some of our students that would get bumped if they were younger. Well, Michael, they asked me if we were going to run a summer course. I said, I don't know until we do our budget mm -hmm. whether we're going to be able to do that. Yeah. So. So can you get clarification from the state that we have to provide for the other towns for free, even though they're not members of our district? Because that doesn't seem to make sense, because they're not, like, our taxpayers are providing money for this program, basically, and their taxpayers aren't. So it seems like we should be able to charge tuition. Well, our taxpayers are providing some of it, but some of it's, well, it's money from the, the state. state. Right. You know, but, but it doesn't sound like it's so 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 roughly, yeah. 
Well, even the state could be telling us how much. Do we need to wait for Tara? I mean, can't the state tell us how much money they're providing for students? I think we can get that information. Okay. Yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. I, mm -hmm. I just, just wanted to be upfront and honest with you uh, that this is, this is new information. Uh, I don't think we've had a run on other schools in our program. Uh, and we are about to have one if, if the Sharon Academy kids uh, are told to mm -hmm. come here. Right. But because yeah. a parent, given the choice of paying hundred, hundreds of dollars right. and then coming for free. It's going to choose free. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. All right. Is there... That brings us to homeschool outreach and access. And um, I think that can be a relatively I've, I've quick provided, update. I think I've provided the list today, actually, of all the homeschoolers that we have listed uh, for this district and also the other districts. Mm -hmm. I've given those, those to the principals and asked them not to share them that with other staff members because it's pretty confidential stuff, but that they have, have what I got from the, the state. I get it couple times a year mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know whether there are any surprises on that list uh, we just sent them out today to yes Owen so I believe our plan is to draft the letter share it among the four of us share it with Bruce about offering programming to homeschool families as as it's available mm -hmm. using the law as our guide there's good guidance on the agency's website. Right. So that's the plan. Okay. So somebody could come in for just one course or one class or extracurricular. And then are there ways to invite them to <coughs> join any email list to stay in the loop of activities? We can look into that. I think we can try. The list that's provided doesn't give there's probably more data. Up on address or have contact information. So hmm. the agency okay. probably has that. But we'll start with a letter and snail mail. Okay, that's awesome. And maybe encouraging them if they are interested to, to um, or to join us on Facebook. I, the mm -hmm. middle school and high school have been very good about posting um, opportunities on Facebook, at least for the extracurriculars. So mm -hmm. um, that's how you. But there's also the school, the Blackboard. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility to, if they gave their email, could they join? Sure. Well, we'd right. have to see how, is that possible, Ray, right? because Blackboard is uh, fed by Web to School and that's for people who are enrolled? So it would have to be a manually updated list, group separate from. It's not else. impossible. No. Okay. okay. Um, and I think that once the website's updated, a lot of the information that people want to access will be at their fingertips. So that's exciting, too. Um, this is interesting. There are, there are 10 students on the state's list of homeschoolers in the middle school and high school. For, give us some sense of the quantity out there. Although, when I look over the list, uh, I can think of two students that I'm pretty sure are homeschool residents of our communities that aren't on the list. So uh, maybe they haven't got their paperwork in this year. Well, that's another part of providing the list right. to the principals that may, we didn't want anybody to fall through the cracks. It's fine if they're on homeschooling, but if they're somewhere in between the school and homeschooling and never have finished signing up or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that's important that we know that and maybe act on that. Right, if you know of families that aren't on that list, but you know that they're out there, find some way to include them in communication, because I can tell you from experience, I've known of families that haven't been registered by the agency, Department of Education, and, you know, the whole Technically, you're supposed to communicate with them, because technically they're true, and they're supposed to be following that. Yeah, yeah, and, right. then, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not, it, you know, not every, I, I think there's been years where they've been understaffed, and so they're not catching those truant individuals, and so it's it's not uncommon, you know, that, that some get missed.
Anything else? Do we have agenda items for our next meeting? Um, or is there is another public comment? Oh, there's another public comment. I'm sorry. Everyone looks at me because I'm the last one left. <coughs> yes, well, Tammy. Oh, Tammy. Um, I don't like to. Um, I, I've got to share some opening school concerns. Okay. Um, the bus schedule for the Royalton campus R3 was completely incorrect, leaving a 20 minute, not 10, which is accommodating, but 20 minutes um, earlier than I expected. Um, when I outreached to the bus system, they um, assured me that they had the students' best needs at hand and that there was some confusion in correspondence. Um, virtual messages on um, the Facebook posts or whatnot shared that Bethel experienced some of those problems um, and drew attention to that to double check the updated listing because there might have been an incorrect listing but nothing was said about the Royalton. Um, so many parents are kind of flying by the seat of their pants, at least those impacted by R3, and I don't mind following up in writing if it's helpful, um, but my first contact point was the bus system. Um, the Crosstown bus um, is a cultural experience from Bethel to Royalton, um, where one learns to speak many things. I think this has been an ongoing um, experience and efforts have been made to try to address it by placing a staff member on the bus and I think the short experience that I've had is that there's been some, not personally but there's been some improvement um, because those people are addressing the issue as soon as they possibly can um, I thought picture day was today at both campuses um, and it's not and so I'm trying to pay attention to the branding that is used between both campuses for the particular student population and even with my decoder ring I can't figure it out um, there's a flu clinic that's offered at the Bethel campus and I don't know if students who are at the Royalton campus are saying hey what about the flu clinic that might or might not be offered at the Royalton campus and so these are kind of gaps that on the receiving end, I, I think it's hard to project what these might be, but these are things that we've experienced. Um, just tonight, hearing the, the positive progress of Bethel Open House is this time, Royalton Open House is this time, is a reflection of administration trying to make a change. Um, so I don't want to be providing just solely negative feedback. I think there is work that goes into it. Um, so this is just a gentle reminder. We're, we're getting there, but we're not there. Um, on the parent end, it gets a little confusing. Um, and there, um, And you have one in each campus now, right? Yeah, so my decoder ring last year doesn't work for the decoding <laughs> I need to do this year. Okay. Um, yeah. So the communication disparities are particularly glaring probably well I, and challenging I, I, if they were uh, I can't figure it out I think just when I think I have it I don't um, mm -hmm. and a mere reflection of that was talking to the Royalton office going hey what's the picture day login ID for the 17th and learning that it's not and she was very helpful at the front desk so no nothing was harmed right. by this but we're making progress but we're not there yet when is picture day just for us that don't know Bethel was today but we have retakes. I mean, I don't know when. It's out on the website because I shared a concern. Um, um, if you check the face, actually, the it's on the, the, Facebook, page. the it's on the Facebook page. That whole picture the, day was on the Facebook page. Is Royalton on the picture Facebook page now? The update the includes morning. both. They were both together. But oh. on the on Monday when I went to search the Royalton Elementary website, I could not tell, which triggered the call to the helpful frontline desk person I could not tell from the website that it was different dates mm -hmm. um, so again reflection of progress um, positive progress we're getting there but not there yet mm -hmm. September 27th in Rome. Okay. thank you for that Bridget or Alexis I, I'm just kind of underlying um, I, I literally emailed Kate this morning and said is my email address okay because I'm not hearing anything and it's weird um, and she said your email address is fine 
Uh, and it just, it, it doesn't seem like we've had a lot of communications yet this year, and I know that there's been a huge transition, and I don't want to be that person, except I always end up being that person. Um, you know, I emailed about the website, I'll confess, in April. April. Um, and so I just, I'll say it one more time, it's a huge recruitment issue when people go on the website, they can't find anything. It's a problem when you look for dates. I put the entire Music Boosters in a tizzy because I got a date mixed up and it wasn't on the website. So if anyone is also on the Music Boosters email address list, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, and the third part is that Especially at the high school and the middle school level, we have a bunch of teenagers and teenagers gossip and teenagers talk, and rumors just fly. Um, and so if, random example out of the blue, you have a big clear halls drill one day, and you don't get an email later saying everything's okay, it can be an environment where you get a lot of rumors that everything is not okay, or everything's okay, or my, you know, my friend told so and so this and this and this, and it's to the giant tin can, you know, game of telephone from one person to another person to another person to another person. Um, and I haven't seen that happen lately, but I know it happens. And I know it happens a lot. So I always, you know, I feel like every semester I'm like, hey, don't forget communication. Um, I have said before, and I don't think I've said it to this administration. I would love to have you guys just put in a real basic crisis communications plan, one of those things where you pull the card out of the box and say, okay, there was a minor fire, and the fire department came, and everything's under control, and then you send it out, and you don't have to think about it, um, aside from focusing on the things that are actually important. And you don't have the potential for rumors really festering when, when, when things happen. I mean, everyone in the school district has gone through, you know, and then the principal got arrested. Uh, so, you know, we all know that crisis is happening and it's important to get that information out fast and accurate because the rumor mill can just go crazy. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. I, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I don't usually talk, but I'm her daughter, so you, you <laughs> knew it was coming <laughs> someday. <laughs> um, I would say, um, kind of adding on to that a little bit, but not really, uh, there's a lot of concern in the student body right now, um, and I know a web sound here today, they have, the student council people, uh, they have a soccer game, but we don't know when things are happening until they're happening a lot of the time. Um, I was talking to a friend after school, and he was like, yo, when is the bonfire? We've heard nothing about it. And the only reason I know about it is because us seniors are freaking out, trying to figure out how to put it, the bonfire together. Um, and it, it is the bonfire. It is. Let me check. This a week from Friday. No, it's Friday. Yeah, okay. a week from Friday. Friday the 20th. Is that the climate awareness? Friday the 20th. No. Friday the 20th. Friday the 20th. Climate, climate awareness. Thank you. Yeah, which is good because it would be bad to get on those right on time. Yeah, it would. It would be really bad. Um, but we, like, but, like, we found out, somebody found out yesterday, I think, because that was when, like, you know, like, we have a little, you know, we have a chat of fundraising ideas, and somebody went, bonfire, what are we doing? And we were like, oh, okay. Um, like, I don't know if that's the game under, is that the game under the lights? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's probably how we know, because there's a ton of kids that play soccer. But, like, I don't play soccer. I have no idea what's happening. Okay. You know, you know, we, at Royalton, we used to have that newsletter that went out every Thursday, which was great because it had the whole calendar in it. So every week, we yeah, had an updated calendar, which had the events coming up. And, you know, you knew to look for that in yeah. the kids' like binders. So. And, and that could be linked to the website. And email. Right. Yeah. And again, that was an easy thing to forward on to somebody and say, hey, your kid's thinking about going to White River School. Look at all the cool stuff going on. Right. Look, at, you know, look at how we know about things. I certainly bragged about the guidance council mm -hmm. newsletter, which it does usually continue to come out pretty reliably once a week. Like, this is happening. This is happening. You feel like you're part of yeah. the greater school community when you get those communications to you, which you know, it feels good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other problem for our students is that like some people know this is happening, some people have no idea. 
mm -hmm. they're not like one unified communication. Reed, did you, you started to say something. Um, I, I think one of the challenges we're having in South Royalton is that we had a year without uh, a front office assistant. <laughs> um, and when we hired our new office assistant uh, the week before school started, uh, she came into a situation where there was a year plus of, of disarray. Uh, and on top of that, we've had the 15 new students that I told you about earlier in the last three weeks. So we, we are still trying to get student registration together. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are very much in a, it feels to me like we're dealing with the kind of first week of school in the front office in terms of getting information back from the community. Uh, we still have maybe a third of families that haven't returned the registration packets. Uh, we're trying to track that down. Uh, so we're, we're behind, but when you look at this year versus last year, the seniors had four days to get ready for the bonfire game because we didn't know when the bonfire game was going to be until four days ahead of time. Uh, this year, we know who the parents are who are picking up the lights uh, already versus we were trying to do that the day beforehand last year. Okay. Um, we're also in a nice position where all the faculty uh, have all of the important dates for the year on a calendar that they have. So any students who had questions about something happening in March or April could talk to a staff member and uh, would have the opportunity to, to know at least when we plan on having the event. It could certainly change, yep. um, but uh, it feels good to have that. But clearly we're not uh, where we would like to be in our, what, 15th, 16th month as the White River Valley High School? Mm -hmm. so. It hasn't, hasn't helped that we uh, traded uh, our star tech uh, support <laughs> professional to the supervisory union, which uh, benefits greatly, I think, the whole issue. He came of his own will. <laughs> and, I don't know why. And we all are going to benefit from <laughs> uh, But uh, unfortunately, his, his replacement. <laughs> His, his, his replacement's been on the job for 14 days as of today. So uh, he's just learning how to do some basic things that we need. Like we're trying to get start testing in, start 360 testing in by the test window. Uh, but we've got to get all the new students into the system before we can do that. And we need to have everything together. And there's just a lot of, a lot of challenges. Um, So you got the feedback. Yeah. Moving forward, okay, Chris. Did we were we ever able to figure out? Because I think we had this discussion last year. Were we ever able to figure out if there's any type of like more automated system that could be used for some of the paperwork stuff? Because uh, we fill out those exactly. beginning of the school year paperwork forms every year, and As my wife and I are writing down the exact same information each maybe year. Maybe people have more kids that they never fill all those forms, but yeah, so we, we, luckily, we have, luckily we have twins who were born on the same day, so we were uh, able to you know, we fill out one form by hand, and then we Xerox, and then write in the names, and then check off the box. I should have done that. I didn't feel like I could, because they were all color -cut. Well, well the my understanding is what the school does have that function, but we have never used it on in this place before yet. And we're looking at potentially a new system later. And so, uh, Web School has the ability in, in a limited fashion for a parent to log in, make adjustments to addresses and phone numbers, which would then go back to the registrar for approval before the change takes effect. But it doesn't have the ability to deal with the registration form and the nursing form and all those other things. And we so can pay additional to have SNAP do the nursing piece, but it's it's an additional cost. Right. So Stratford does have a setup where they have uh, an online repository of forms, which is actually done by the spouse of a staff member of Stratford. Um, but they're not interested in doing it. Okay. For the district. Year. Um, so, in the district, could do a trade for drivers. Where, <laughs> in the district where I work, I get the printout form from the from the student information system, and um, 
I just initial, or the parent just initials the corner if there's no changes. And that is tremendously helpful, I think. Five minutes for one kid, 30 minutes for the other. It was life changing. Mm -hmm. Life changing. Well, it just, it, the first night of school, I mean, my son always really appreciated that I had a lot of homework and he did not. Right. Well, and then, this one's at the preschool. I know a lot of preschool <laughs> level parents had, were questioning uh, that, I guess at the preschool screening, we filled out all the forms, and then the day before preschool started at the orientation, my wife had to fill out all the exact same forms again. Uh, and, and so every parent at the Royalton campus had to fill out the exact same forms again that they had filled out previously at the preschool screening, and, the, and they were told that that was just the way it had to be. Uh, and so, <laughs> So there were, like, every, my wife said that every single parent was sitting there filling this out and just like, we just filled this out a couple months ago. We just filled this out a couple months ago. We just filled this out a couple months ago. Um, so I said I would bring it up here. And yeah, obviously coordination needs to be done. Yeah. And we'll improve upon that as we do preschool registration for next year. Okay, good, thank you. Yes, Owen. I'd also recommend <clears throat> that folks go through the school principals. And, I mean, it's fine to do it at the board, but we can take care of things pretty quick on the ground if we hear about things. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear about it until the evening, and by that time, the forms were already filled out, so there was no, no going back. Okay. Any agenda items for our next meeting? So that'll be our October meeting. I recommend that we start, we get a boiler update at that point in time from the Bethel campus. Um, driver's ed update and also uh, um, a budget update just if we have some preliminary and information and the audit. Tuition students as well okay. and sprinter van and sprinter van okay. Okay. yeah I have that in there. okay anything and then, else and then I guess maybe an update on potential plans for the preschool next year uh, at the Royalton campus and just trying to, again, be in the same between the two campuses. We talked about that at the, yeah. at the retreat. So. Anything else? Okay. And in November, um, I've heard from both town clerks that they would like to join us and start on that preliminary town meeting planning piece. So I don't know if in the minutes we can say November agenda item. Or school meeting um, planning? Town clerk, school meeting planning, yep. Annual school meeting planning. Just, they really felt um, like they wanted to be more engaged throughout awesome. the process, which I think is fabulous. Mm -hmm. That was rushed last year. Yep. At the end. I think the audit threw us all off. Yep. So I'm so grateful that we're on target to have it by the end of October again. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you all. Oh, I, is there any motion? To adjourn? To adjourn. At the ridiculously so early so hour. Um, okay, any second for that? Second. All right. All in Great favor? Great time, people. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Pretty quick.